back to another episode of GastroCast Rewind. In this video, we actually interview Top Pops. And this occurred way back at our old house, believe it or not. It was that long ago? It was a long time ago, but Top Pops is such a great guy. If you guys don't watch his channel, you totally need to go and check it out. He is the man. And right now, I think he's at like 2.5 million subs. Yeah, it is insane. People love Top Pops. He is so positive and so kind. I honestly feel so like grateful that we know such an awesome person. Me too. And this interview is really, really fun. So go and check it out. Tristan from Top Pops is here with us. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hey, dude, it's so, so awesome to have you on. Um, you know, it's interesting. When we first started doing this, we really didn't know what the YouTube world was like. And I remember going on YouTube, we created maybe our first or second video. And I was like, I'm going to go and look around and see who else does the Funko type YouTube stuff. And you were like the first person that popped up. And it was like all these videos. So I remember one night I kind of just threw it on like my TV while I was making dinner, you know, with Heather and my son. And we were just watching through all your videos and just couldn't believe the amount of just content that you had put out. When did you start doing the YouTube Top Pops YouTube. Um, um, I, guess I guess it would be, it would around, be around 2015 we started, we started actually doing, doing Funko, Funko YouTube. YouTube. I've, I've had, had my channel, channel I think, it's, it's, I, I, I think it's since 2020, 2020, 2020, maybe, maybe early, early 2015. 2015. Um, um, we, really we really started, started doing, I guess, I guess we've, we've been, been doing content, content like I said, since, since 20, 20, like, like, maybe, maybe 2015, 2015, but we've been doing every day a video since 2016, I think it was. Wow. Okay. So you do every, so you have never faltered it's every single day. Uh, I, 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 I keep tabs, tabs on this every single, single day since December 16th, 2016. Wow. I, I don't know. I don't know. I know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I keep I, that I keep number, number or date, date just in case. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, are, does it work similar to like, you know, a lot of these TV shows like Ellen and stuff, most of the time they'll film maybe like three episodes in one day and then they post them up later. Is that kind of how you operate? Um, um, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I wish, wish I did, I did that. that. I don't. I don't. Um, it's, um, it's usually, usually like, like the day, the day before, before I film, and then I try to edit it and then post it the, the, the day uh, the next day. day. But the good but news is, is that recently I've had my friend editing them, so I kind of just film, and then maybe he'll like ask me like one quick thing here and there about each video. But yeah, it's pretty much like the day before we film, we edit, and then it comes up the next day. Impressive. So your brother is actually helping you with editing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Somebody is saying there's an echo. So let me turn down the echo. Boom. Echo is gone. Um, so that's awesome. <laughs> so you don't have to focus on just you, you. So you're you're just really at this point, like the talent. And then your brother edits the videos down for you. Now, do you ref, did you do you review them before they go up? I mean, so how does this work? I, I do review them. So what happens is, is I'll give him the footage. I tell him what the video is, kind of what I want it to look like. Um, then he'll maybe take an hour, two hours, edit it. And then he brings it back to me, just like the footage. And then I'll, uh, you know, just like watch it over once or twice. Uh, maybe cut out something, add, a, you know, maybe like a funny clip here and there. Uh, maybe photos on the screen. Sometimes he'll be like, I don't know where I can find this one. I'll put it on the screen for him. Uh, small stuff like that. But uh, yeah, for the most part, he does the bulk of the editing and then I just kind of like check it over, like you said. Awesome. That's cool. Well, I mean, that's it's uh, sort of like kind of a, a team family team kind of effort. Do you, Does your, your parents and, and, and folks help out with your videos or help out with any of this stuff? I mean, in terms of like, uh, you know, being supportive, I mean, they do. They're always supportive of the video. Sometimes they'll be in a video every once in a while, um, but they don't really help out on like the kind of like technical side. It's more so just like, you know, uh, they're like help willing to drive us over to wherever, right? Like whether it be hot topic or now that I've got my license, I can drive. It's just sometimes they want to come with me anyways okay. to go to the mall. Like of course my mom wants to go shopping. I mean, not, not recently or anything like that. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, they, they, they do come and support and like just drive us around and stuff like that. You know, um, how, how has the pandemic been for you? I mean, I, I know for us being, we, you know, we also do the YouTube thing. We make videos and stuff. And I find that I have way more time than ever to sit in and make videos. Mm -hmm. and, and I have, I actually have been putting out more content than ever right now. And, and I think it's mainly because of the pandemic. If the pandemic wasn't a thing, I might be out doing something else. So how has the pandemic been for you? 
Uh, for me, it's been pretty good. I mean, I've had to kind of figure out different kind of more creative videos because a lot, and I'm okay with that though. I like to kind of, you know, uh, try to be more creative whenever I can, but it has been a little bit tough some days because we can't just go to say Hot Topic or GameStop just to pick something up real quick and then show off. Here's the newest thing. Uh, we, we usually have to like order it, then it comes in two weeks later yeah. and then we have to show it off. So it's a little bit different. I mean, we're doing more so unboxings than us having fun going out and about. Um, so, I mean, it's not too different. But it, it is a little bit tougher because we can't just go out one day and pick stuff up. Have you found that you cha- you've changed a little bit of how you operate because of this? Like, in other words, it'll change how you'll move, at, you know, going into the future, even past the pandemic, possibly. Uh, has it changed how you're going to be operating? Um, I don't know. Probably not really. But I have been ordering more stuff online and it has been nice because then I can like guarantee that I'm going to get these figures in instead of like guessing and testing and going to different stores. Um, But people do really like the hunt instead of me just being like, here's the figure. They like to see like, oh, we had to go to GameStop, didn't have it. They went to Target, didn't have it. So I mean, maybe we'll probably go back to that. But it is nice to order stuff. If we know something's going to be like maybe rare or harder to find, it's nice to know we have it just by ordering it, I guess. Sure. So let's yeah. di- let's dive back in time a little bit. Why, where, and why, when, and why did you start collecting Funko Pops specifically? That was because of my brother Noah. Um, he is he. I remember. I forget what year it was. I don't know. It was a long time ago. Probably right around the same time we started the channel. Maybe a little bit later than that. So it was probably like beginning of 2015. Um, we he had picked me up a figure for my birthday, and we we had been watching The Big Bang Theory a lot. Um, back then, so he grabbed me a Sheldon Cooper one. Cool. Um, and that was so we had that one. That was the first one I started with. And then after that, it was kind of like it's that thing where it's like a snowball. It's like you, you look, you have one now, and I look it up online, and there's like you know they show like 500 more or whatever. And then you, right. you also have the other full set for the Big Bang Theory. And then I remember back then it wasn't that easy to get figures, so it was literally whatever I could find. Like if we went to Walmart and there was one there, I'd pick up pretty much every single one. Um, I remember like back then it was like. Uh, the Big Bang Theory, and what was another one? My Little Pony had come up. Oh, yeah. Uh, can you guys hear me all right? Sorry. I can, we can, uh, we can. I can't say it. S-I-R-I turned on. I don't want to say it. Got gotcha, you, got you, got you. Go ahead, computer. go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but it was the the Big Bang, I don't know what I said. Uh, I'm going to skip that one. BBT, as well as um, My Little Pony, that one as well. Those one had just come out. So, like, it was pretty much like, oh, they had a Twilight Sparkle? Let's get this one. And then we were like, oh, maybe we'll get this one here. Like, Spider-Man had just come out. So it was, like, a lot of random figures. Um, yeah, I guess we started back then, and it just kind of started growing from there. So it just started off as, um, uh, I don't know, like... Going to the store, picking up a couple, and then eventually it turned into, I don't know, just like everybody else, you know, you just can't stop doing it, I guess. Like, you just can't stop buying them because they're so cheap. Like, I know I that was my major reason is I bought 10, and I was like, wow, they're only $10 a piece. I'm going to go buy five more. Yeah, it was pretty much that, too, because it's not like one of those things. And back then, I wasn't really... Um, you know, having I didn't have an income at all. So it's kind of like whenever I'd go to the store, I'd be like, oh, mom, can I get this? And she's like, sure. I mean, it's $10. Like you said, it's not like it was like a $100 figure and you can only buy one, like, say, once a year. They're $10. So pretty much like whenever we run to the store, it could be like, sure, it's it's $10. It's not that much. Right. Mm-hmm. W- yeah. Where did the name come from? How did you come up with Top Pops? Why Top Pops? I don't know. It was a bit of a weird one. It was kind of like we were just sitting around and I was trying to think of a name and then my brother thought of Top Pops because we wanted to show off, like, oh, we, we, we were going with, like, we wanted to show off the best of the figures or we wanted to be, like, I don't know. Is that, does that make sense? It was yeah, kind of, no, like... it makes sense. Yeah, like, we wanted to try and show off, like, the best figures that we could find or the newest ones, so, like, the Top Pops. But I guess it also works out to be, like, pop culture as well. Um, so it kind of works two ways. But there wasn't really a meaning to it. I guess it was just kind of, like, it flowed and Top Pops kind of sounds good together. <laughs> it's interesting because you then become the top Funko channel on YouTube. And so it's funny that the name actually kind of correlates with <laughs> with with how things have turned <laughs> out. It's so crazy. He's what, the, the top pop channel. Right. Uh, w- what a perfect name. Mm. I mean, really, what a perfect name. I guess, yeah. Your, your parents, how do they feel about this now? I mean, back then they knew they were buying toys for you every once in a while. To them, it's just, oh, I'm buying them a new little action figure. Now what do they think exactly, about all yeah. this? 
Um, I mean, like I said, they're very supportive. It's always like, uh, if I don't, uh, I don't know, it's it's pretty much like, my mom's actually very in, invested in this. My dad will be like, oh, uh, he'll check my subscriber count every once in a while or something like that. Um, and But of course, he's been in videos too. But my mom's always like on top of things because she, she's also has access to my Top Hops Instagram because sometimes I don't, I like, I'll be like, could you reply to this real quickly just because it's easier that way and then we can both go back and forth. Um, so she is pretty involved when it comes to that, especially, like I said, to her driving us around. And uh, it's really useful that way because um, sometimes I'll like long, long car trips and stuff like that it's easier just to have extra people in the car sure uh but yeah she, she's pretty supportive yeah i mean both of them are that's cool yeah because i you know i'm i'm a lot older than you right so <laughs> when when i started doing this my parents i honest to god i thought my parents would think i was a complete lunatic because i'm out buying now you know at the time i was up to 500 funko pops and they're like what the hell is this kid wow. doing um well kid now i'm what 36 years old but they're very supportive of me and they, they want to sit. My dad will watch our videos and everything. In fact, my dad's watched your videos as well. It's kind of funny because wow. now that he's involved in all of this stuff, he watches like all of the other YouTubers that we talk about. Right. So I find that kind of interesting, but my parents have always kind of backed me in it and that's a good feeling. So it must be a good feeling for you. I mean, for them to watch where you've come from, where you started, I mean, that must be, that must be a really big deal to them. I'm sure they think a whole lot of you for that. Hmm. Um, so what did you collect before Funko Pops? Did you collect um, anything? There's been a bunch of different things. Sorry to cut you off there. No, 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 no. That's okay. I, I, I'm talking an over and over. Um, no, but I was... I, so did you did you collect something before Funko Pops? I did. Um, I've always kind of collected things. When I was super little, I used to collect rocks. Um, and then I had like a little bucket of them. And then it turned into... Um, I don't know if you guys know what these are, but like uh, Go-Go's, Crazy Bones. Um, I have yeah. a popcorn bowl full of them. They're like these little things that and they're supposed to balance on your finger. Um, they're like really small. They're probably the size of maybe like a pint sized hero or something like that. Um, and all it is is you just put it on your finger and then you can play games with them. And then you, there was like sticker books and each one would come with a sticker and you had to put it in the book. Um, there was rarer <laughs> ones, pretty much like mystery minis. Okay. Um, but there was that. And then I think I'll, I'll also Hot Wheels cars. Um, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. Maybe uh, not as much, but like Skylanders and Amiibos and stuff like that. Oh, we have yeah. a bunch of those. So pretty much, I think that was, I think after like Skylanders was pretty much like Pops, I think. Pops have probably been my longest collectible. Um, but yeah, I mean like since Pops, we've also been collecting stuff too. But it's, I think up to there was probably the newest thing was Skylanders and then Pops, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Skylanders, I don't know too much about maybe due to my age, but Amiibos, I definitely <laughs> know about. Um, a friend of mine, he collected a lot of those as well. Do you have a lot of, do you have a lot of Amiibos still? I mean, not. I, I probably have maybe twenty. Okay. It wasn't too crazy, but um, I do have a good amount. Like I've got like the Wii Fit trainer. There's that one that was from Dia Was it Diablo? I think they came out with one as well. I think there was one. I don't know. I don't know if it was Diablo. Um, I don't know. But anyways, there was one that came out a little while ago. But yeah, there was a good. It was a good amount of them. Uh, we got like Mario. I think stuff like that. Oh, cool. Are you a Are you a big yeah. um, Nintendo player? Do you play a lot of Switch? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's mostly like because we, we do live stream on our second channel, too. So we've been playing a little bit more recently, but we've been doing like uh, Mario Kart. We want to do um, Smash Bros, uh, stuff like that. I don't play too many games on there because I don't actually have that many. I just bought Mario Maker 2. Um, I've been having fun with that a little bit. But yeah, I've been trying out some new uh, Switch games, but I do play a bit on there. Oh, Animal Crossing as well. Right. That's another big one. Oh, Animal Crossing. It, it was almost yeah. as if Animal Crossing, like Nintendo knew that the pandemic was coming. So they had to create some something for everybody to like play during the pandemic. And they came up with like the best thing. I think it's the one of the top selling Nintendo games now, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's like a couple Smash Bros and then Animal Crossing right there. Not surprised. Not surprised at all. No. Uh, you you refer. I'm only talking about this. Um, this wasn't even a question um, that I came up with, but second channel. So tell us about your second channel. Okay, so that there is something that we've kind of just had off and on, but because we've had more time, we wanted to do it. So, um, you know, if I put up a video every day on the main channel, it's mostly Funko stuff. It's pretty much predominantly Funko um, and other collectibles as well get kind of sprinkled in there. But I like to do the second channel because it's it's fun. I can do different stuff. We've done like Pokemon over there. Uh, we do like maybe smaller reviews on like specific characters as well because, um, you know, you can't make a full big video on that as well as maybe uh what's another one we did some live streams like i had mentioned we've been live streaming over there a lot more uh people enjoy those so it's just pretty much like our non-funko channel we kind of do like whatever we want on that one awesome. uh, if we have a good idea that's not funko we do it over there so what do you call that what's the channel called it's called top ups 2 t-w-o <laughs> that's awesome okay well that's that's a pretty easy name i mean I, guys uh that are watching right now if you didn't know about it i'm sure you do already but 
that's a pretty easy channel to find. What, so I guess that name came up. It's almost like having a couple of ch- uh, channels on the radio or something. Like Howard Stern has two channels, and one's Howard Stern and one's Howard 101, because that's literally the very next channel. So was it just that, like just hmm. to make it as easy as possible? Was that the whole point? Pretty much, because like, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if it still does, but if you type in Top Pops, and maybe it's because I'm logged in on my account, um, but it used to come up as Top Pops, and then a little bit farther down would be Top Pops too. So if you're looking through just the search, if you look for me, it kind of shows up right away. Awesome. Like if I were to call it something completely different, I feel like it wouldn't have popped up, and then it's not as easy to find, but I thought Top Pops 2 was a good name for That's it. I don't know. Perfect. No, I think it's perfect. Yeah. Why not? Um, we do have a couple <laughs> of questions here from... Uh, from from folks in the chat heather i I, i'll leave it to you why don't you ask a couple questions from people out there okay this is a really interesting one and i don't think you had this on your list of questions so i really like it um dean blockley asks where do you see yourself and your collection in five years Ooh, i don't know um I mean, I hope to still be doing some sort of online video content. Um, I don't know if it'll still be on YouTube, but I hope it is. I mean, fingers crossed it is. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's always fun to, 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 I guess, know what's coming soon. Well, like, I don't know. I mean, I get this question sometimes, but I don't know. Maybe the collection be way bigger, perhaps collecting maybe more, maybe buying more expensive figures um, in terms of like uh, hot toys or even like designer collectibles or um, just even more expensive pops. Because right now, I think the most I've spent on one is... 200 i'd like to maybe buy like more expensive figures uh like even more than that like i don't know if this is, sounds crazy but like a thousand dollar ones i don't know sure yeah uh, but maybe something like that where we just like kind of expand and buy more expensive figures um to kind of make crazier videos i guess cool interesting that you've never purchased a hot uh i'm sorry a funko pop over 200 dollars. i figured you might have all you know c- considering how long you've been collecting and all that stuff the channel i thought you might have already done that <laughs> So I, you know, to well, add, some of them. an add-on question, um, not to cut you off, but an add-on question to that. No, it's what, all good. What Funko Pop would you buy? That's a very expensive one. Do you have one off the top of your head? Would be like your first one to go for? Probably some sort of ad icon. Um, maybe like the Bob's Big Boy, the one, the SCC one, or the uh, there was the Freddy Funko as the three of them. I think there was the Booberry, Count Chocula, and Frankenberry. Um, those ones would probably be top because I want to do finish that set eventually. Um, it's just really tough because some of those ones are like two to three thousand dollars, so it's kind of crazy. And you can't oh, yeah. just do that on a random day, um, so you kind of have to save up for that one, or I don't know, find one for super cheap, which you're never going to be able to. But uh, yeah, probably those. Yeah, that's those are expensive. It's funny because you go <laughs> you go and look in like the Funko app or PPG or whatever, and some of these pops are. Like, I could go out and buy a brand new car for some. You know how much some of these go for? It's crazy. Um, let's see. Okay, Heather, do you want to ask another question from the audience? Yeah, this sort of goes hand in hand with the question I just asked a little bit. Um, Brian Barrick asks, what is a Pez Grail you are after or hope to add to your collection? Oh, oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. I've just recently gotten back into Pez collecting. I used to buy them every once in a while if I'd see them at like the dollar store or whatever, because they're not too expensive. Um, but I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. I don't know too much. Like, I don't know enough about Pez to know what some of the most expensive ones are. Um, I do know there was one that came out. I don't know what it was exactly called, but it was almost like a Pez, but it was a Mr. Potato Head style where you could take the pieces off and put them on. Um, but they recalled it because of uh, it being too small of pieces and choking hazard with kids oh wow um so i think that could be kind of cool so i think it's worth like three four thousand dollars something like that um so that is one of those ones that would be neat to see especially when it's in the box i mean i've got a lot of them here but a lot of the ones i buy at like thrift stores and stuff like that because they have like a bag of them for like two to three dollars so it's fun to see if those are kind of expensive um but yeah i don't know i don't know too i don't think i know enough about pets to know like a real grail Um, but that that one that's kind of like mr potato would probably be up there that's pretty cool um, I don't, I don't, I yeah. personally don't know a whole lot about Pez myself. Um, I know that there's, that, what is it, the pop Pez stuff now, but I don't know. Like, I remember getting some of them at, when I was a kid, like regular Pez dispensers, but I don't know, like, what's valuable versus what isn't. You know, I don't know. Enough right. To, you know, I don't know. Um, do you have, <laughs> this is an interesting question I came up with. Do you have any special hidden talents? Ooh, ooh, um, I don't know. This is a tough one. I mean, uh, I I used to be able to play the piano. Uh, okay. I mean, I mean, I still can. I mean, I'm sure I could do it. Uh, but I I did piano for seven years. I think it was. 
I stopped maybe two or three years ago. I stopped in high school. I don't know. It got kind of busy, and every every Monday I'd have to go to piano, and it was kind of like eh, annoying. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I played piano for a while. So that, I guess that does that count as a talent? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, mean, I don't know. Of course, sure. The talent I don't have. I'll take it then. <laughs> <laughs> you know awesome. what you should do? You should you should play the piano, make a song, and have it for one of your intros. Boom, done. Awesome. Hey, that's not a bad idea. See, boom. Um. What are some things that you do, or what are some things you enjoy beside collecting Funko Pops and running your channel? Are there, like, we talked about the Switch and you playing video games and stuff, but are there any other things you like to do um, outside of that? I mean, I don't know, because the thing is, I kind of incorporate whatever I enjoy into collecting or, like, the videos and stuff like that. Like, one of the main ones, I guess I could say, is thrift store hunting. It's always fun to see if you can find, like, weird older things um for a good price so i guess that could be one of them but then i kind of turned that into a video so it still kind of counts as youtube um but that is really fun to do for me i don't know we go around especially with um everything kind of slowly opening back up and people have been donating a lot probably because of like i don't know you're just at home so long you might as well clean and find some old stuff that you don't need anymore right so i've been finding a lot of really cool stuff recently um and like goodwill and stuff like that um so i guess thrift store hunting but then again like i've turned it like you said I've, like i said i turned it into a video thing um so i guess it counts as something different I guess I don't show all of it. Like, if I were to just go, like, once or twice, I mean, that's something I, I do besides YouTube, I guess. So how do you, how do you determine what you're going to make a YouTube video out of? If you're running around and you're doing all these different things, thrift stores and stores and finding Funko Pops, it, does it have to be something that you really like and you're like, oh, this is so cool, i got to make a video of this? Or do you think on the other side of, like, I think people would really enjoy this, so I think I should make a video about it? It's probably a little bit of both because, I mean, if I'm passionate about it, I try to incorporate it into a video that I can somehow show to my audience. Um, the thing is, though, too, with the, with the main channel, it's kind of like people want to see Funko Pops and collectibles. So I can't just do random videos. Like, I can't go way far off. But, I mean, if I were to do a Pez one, but I happen to find a pop, but it's mainly about Pez, I feel like that works. Uh, but, I mean, people usually like to see at least, like, one new pop in each video. Um, so it is kind of tough to show off different stuff. Because it usually has to be towards pop related things. I don't know. It, 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 like people, that, that, that's what they subscribe for, of course, is like pops and collectibles. So if I don't do that, it's it's something that I enjoy, but not as many people watch it. You know what I mean? So I don't do it too often. Right. Does so, that make sense? Yeah. So you're basically, you don't like to go off the beaten path because people are subscribing to you specifically for the Funko Pop. I, I, that makes sense. Of course. Yeah. That, that makes sense to me. I know a lot of the time for me, I, you know, it's always my like what my passion is, so I'm hoping to share it and somebody else will pick it up. We've done stuff about the abominable to, abominable toys chomp, and we've done tiny ghost stuff. So, and I've had a lot of people say, "Oh, well, I found out about these things because of your channel, and I really happen to enjoy them." Mm. So it makes me want to do them, but they don't typically turn out to be very popular videos because not a whole lot of people know exactly what the heck they are, right? So, well, it's, it's right, but I enjoy doing those. Sure, absolutely, and that's kind of the- where that's kind of where I'm at. Is that if I enjoy doing it, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, they're the funnest for me. I think the yeah. ones that aren't just Funko. Absolutely, um, mm-hmm. Dead Skeleton Show. Just to, um, uh, just want to shout out to you. Thank you very much. He dropped. He just dropped ten dollars. Um, so thank you so much. That's oh, wow. that's really awesome, man. And he has a question for you. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure if you can answer this or not. So just say pass if you can't. But has Funko ever approached you about creating a Top Pops Funko Pop? No, I, I wish. I mean, that was one of those things. That it's like one of those dreams that I've always wanted. Uh, but no, they've never reached out. Um, and I would never want to reach out to them either because I'm sure I'd get a resounding no. Um, <laughs> but I, I would love I would love to eventually. But I just I, here's the thing too. Like when you think about influencers or people online that they've created, it's Ninja. And if you're to compare me to Ninja, he's got m- millions and millions of subscribers, nowhere near where I am. So just because I collect Funko Pops, I don't expect to get one. You know what I mean? I'm just a well, collector that happens hold, to make videos on them. Hold on here. Yeah. So let's let let me just make a point about that. So you're talking about Ninja. Ninja does nothing. Mm-hmm. Ninja does nothing for Funko. Nothing, right? On a real level. No. Ninja does nothing for Funko. You, my friend, on the other hand, you make all these videos, you get all these views, you have all these people watching and tuning in for the new Funko Pops that you get. I would I would suggest that you deserve a Funko Pop way before Ninja does. I mean, Ninja might sell a little bit better. 
Um, well, I wouldn't even say that, actually. Let me take that back because I think more people would buy your Funko Pop because of who you are and you're in tune with what they what they like. Like, I would pick your Funko Pop over Ninja, although I don't really know much about Ninja, but I would totally go out and buy your <laughs> Funko Pop because you're a, fun- you're a Funko Pop guy. You're, you love Funko Pops, right? I mean, it just makes sense to right. me that they would make a Funko Pop of you. But I'm I'm sure you have a ton of customs people made of you and a whole bunch of other stuff, right? Yeah, we have a couple, actually. I, I think we've had maybe about five or six come through, so they're always fun to see, um, and the different things that people pick uh, for me. I actually I don't know where they are. I had one in here the other day. I don't know where it disappeared to. Uh, but anyways, we have a couple of them. Uh, but yeah, they're fun to see, especially... I, I actually kind of like the custom ones that people like take the time and effort to make. Um, and of course, uh, I'd love to see both, but I think it's fun to see like the art pieces that people make of uh, or their ideas of what I kind of look like. It's fun. I'd be I'd be very interested to know and I you know how how much money Funko has made based off of you and your videos. How many how many people have tuned into your videos and said, "Oh my god, uh, look at that pop that Tristan is showing today. I really need to go out and get that one." I can pretty much tell you right now for me personally that I purchased Funko Pops just because I've seen them on your channel. It has happened. This is, but this is, you know, this is right around the time. But when we started our channel and everything, I was watching stuff that you're doing. I was like, wow, that's really cool. I didn't even know that was a thing yet, right? Because I don't think people are as in tune. I'm not going to say that I'm 100% in tune with everything. I, I'm, I, I can't say that because there are some things I don't understand in the Funko world, like Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know that stuff really. But, right. But all in all, you know, I think that you got to be in tune in some respect if you're going to have a channel like this. You just happen to be plugged in from way, way long ago. I, I personally, I, I personally think that you deserve your own Funko Pop. <laughs> That's the point that I'm getting at. You deserve your own Funko Pop. Thank you. Um, Thanks. so <clears throat> what was the? So I don't know if you mentioned this, but this is one of my questions. I just want to make sure that I get it covered. What was the very first Funko Pop that you purchased? Do you he remember? Did okay. What was that Funko Pop? It was. Um, oh my gosh! He just huh? said it like five minutes ago. Did he? Yes, I feel so. Su- Sheldon. Ah, Sheldon. Okay. Well, te- wait, did, wait. Did you say purchased or or see? See, there's a there's a difference oh, there. Per- purchase. I mean, purchase. technically, technically. Uh, okay, this is gonna be sad. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony. Now, the only reason was is because, like I said back then, there wasn't that many figures out there. So Sheldon Cooper, of course, was my first. But I th- well, actually, there could be two. It was either Pennywise, the original one. Or Twilight Sparkle. Very different figures. Very. Um, <laughs> like, completely yeah, different. It was one, yeah, it was one or the other. Because, like I said, you couldn't find very many back then. So what you could find, I'd just pick up any if anything, really. Okay. Yeah. So, back when you started all this, um, you know, you, you you said you go back to when when do you start your channel? Do you say 2015 or 2016? 2016. 2016? 2016. Okay. 2016. Yeah. Okay. So, back then... <laughs> Back then, did you notice that a lot of people had channels already? Were you looking at other people's channels before you started doing this? Or did you just basically wing it and it was your own thing? Um, well, it was kind of a little bit of... Like, there was very few, I think, back then. I would say maybe a handful. Um, and we thought back then... I remember we used to watch... I don't know if you guys know who they are, but it's uh, Nerd Therapy. Yes. Um, watch some of their stuff. And we were really into it. And they did a lot of collectibles. So we were like, oh, we, we could probably try this. I mean, that's, I feel like everybody says that when they're trying to make a channel. Like, we could do this. And so we uh, we threw it together a video. It's not a great one. We had it. It was like, I think we used a camera and we stuck it to a chair. And we just kind of like sat there. And it was it was pretty awkward. I was actually sitting in this chair here. I know you guys can't see it, but it was this one. <laughs> um, and we just tried. It was one shelf. We, we tried our best with it. I mean, people still enjoy it. It's fun to go back and look at it. Um yeah, I don't know. It was, a bit, it was a bit of a weird one. Yeah, we, we just decided to try it, and I guess it kind of worked. Uh, but yeah, that, oh, sorry. To go back to the question, I got off topic there. Um, I guess we did watch, yeah, like I said, Nerd Therapy for that one. Nerd Therapy is what got Okay. So the- when did you start noticing that your channel was taking off? Like, you know, you noticed an upward trajectory? Probably when we started doing daily videos. Um, I think that was probably the best for us just because every, like every day you could see new content. So it'd have people like come back daily, um, to see the new stuff. Or even if it was just back then, like a new figure that we had purchased, it wasn't like crazy videos where we're like out hunting and showing off like 15 boxes or something like that. Um, yeah, daily really helped because I guess it just kind of created a, like a, uh, a routine for us. So we were constantly uploading every day and then people were constantly coming back as well. Okay, so daily is kind of what got you to where you are. So that's really funny because Heather and I decided, 
I think it would have been about a week and a half ago, we were going to start posting a video every day. In fact, I, I did it. It was almost by accident because new things were coming up and I, I couldn't really keep up with my, my mind. I told you, I, I feel like I've never been diagnosed, but I feel like I'm ADD. But if something comes <laughs> in my mind, I feel like I have to do it right now. Otherwise, it'll be gone. It'll never come back to me. So I'll, we'll run downstairs, we'll record a video, and then we'll upload it. And you're on to something um, because we started uploading every day and we're getting the most amount of views we've ever gotten right now because of that. And I guess it's people, you know, I never really thought of it this way, but I guess people really do like to see somebody putting out something new all the time, like that constant pulsating kind of thing happening. I, me personally, I'm not that type of YouTube watcher. Like I'll watch a video, a couple of videos a week. I don't know if I'd watch a video every single day. It's just, it's interesting what you learn while you're doing all this. I just started, after three years of doing this, I just started paying attention to analytics, um, which is mind-blowing, right? Because I, I didn't pay attention to any of that stuff. When did you start paying attention to that kind of thing, like the analytics and the numbers? Um, I don't know. I've always kind of liked looking at it just to see how many people enjoyed the video or, um, you know, I guess it really depends. But um, I guess it was probably... Maybe the whole time. I don't know. I just like looking at it. You know what I mean? It's fun to see, like, even if we were getting 20 views that day, it's fun to see, oh, it's gone a little bit higher than the other video, and it's a little bit lower than this one. So we get to see what people enjoy versus don't enjoy as much. Um, and I guess that really does help when you're doing a video every day as well, because there's more chances for the videos to do better than, you know, once a week or twice a week, because then you only have two out of the seven days instead of all seven videos. And sure. then, like, even if it's only two of them do really well, you might not have done those videos if you were doing one or two a week. Right. So, I don't know, but I, yeah. Do you notice a lot of your older videos still getting like watched and uh, gaining numbers and everything else? Uh, yeah, one of them, actually, this is, I, I hate this video. Um, it's the uh, Fortnite mystery code reveal. Do you remember how on the front of the boxes they had a QR code on them? Um, and it was just to say it was an officially licensed product. Yeah. But uh, we we did one saying that maybe you could possibly get free V-Bucks if you scan in this code. So now almost I, almost every day I get somebody messaging me, this didn't work, you suck. I don't know, just something <laughs> like that. But it's, it's up to like, I forget what it's up to now. It's it's a crazy amount of views. Just be, And it was like one of those videos that I was like, oh, I'll do it. I, I didn't know what it was. So I scanned it in during the video for the first time. And it just happened to be nothing. It was literally just said, this is an officially licensed Fortnite product. Um, but I guess people, because of the title, um, they really, really did hate me for that one. How, how do you handle negative feedback? I don't know. You just kind of, I, for me personally, um, I remember when I first started and it, it, you get like one negative comment every once in a while, but there wasn't that many comments. So it'd be like, it kind of stand out more. Um, but what I try to do is like, just ignore those ones and maybe even like look at the positive ones and maybe try to reply to one of them instead of replying to a negative one. Uh, so if you, you know, you, you, you kind of ignore that one. I try to ignore it as much as possible. Um, cause you, you do get the reoccurring people, but there's always that thing that you can hide people from the channel so they can keep commenting. Um, but you don't see it, which is sure. nice. I like that. <laughs> uh, so they can, they can still keep hating, but nobody sees it. I think it's kind of funny. That's awesome. Do they, yeah. do they so, think that, that people are seeing it? You mean the hate comments yeah. or whatever, the negative ones? I, I think people see it. Some people reply to it. I, I've noticed that oh. the ones that are positive, though, seem to get to the top rather than the ones that are negative. Yeah. Um, so usually the, the negative ones gets pushed down, and then maybe the the, 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 the couple co uh, positive comments, sorry there, um, kind of get like a couple likes to get them pushed to the top. So I feel like that does help. Um, but yeah, they're still there. I just don't notice them as much, I guess. Awesome. It, it's interesting because you, you never know what – what kind of feedback you're going to get when you post something up. Um, and I notice every once in a while we'll get something negative. And most of the time it's me because I'm screaming at the cat. I scream like I can't hear myself. So I just yell a lot. So people always complain about me yelling. Um, do you know what, what, what do people typically say? I mean, what are people? So ha are they just hating the content of the video? It, well, it's it's usually if I get something wrong about a figure, and here's the thing, like sometimes I don't even buy the figure, or if it's for my brother, and it's like an anime figure or something like that, and I don't know much about it, and I even say that, I'll be like, I don't know much about it, but it's for him, and then people will get mad if I pronounce something wrong, or I say, <laughs> I do say one thing a lot, I say if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I have a guy every video that has an if I'm not mistaken counter, um, I wonder if I'll put it on the bottom of this video, but this one, I think we were up to like 12 in one video one time. And I don't even know that I'm saying it half the time. Uh, but yeah, that is one of the ones. And then I guess there's stuff like I talk too quickly. I'm probably doing it right now even as, I, as I'm talking right now. 
Uh, but yeah, stuff like that. It's nothing too harsh. It's just like it's mostly on my end and uh, stuff I have to fix. But yeah, it, it's not too bad anyway. Well, you, you handle you handle it very well because there's some people out there who probably can't handle that kind of hate. You know, with with a channel like yours and the amount of you know, not, I'm not even talking about subscribers. Let's just talk about views in general. The amount of views that you get, you have so many people watching this stuff, and of course, you're going to have to have somebody out there that is a, a quote unquote hater, right? So you're going to get some bad feedback every once in a while. Um, it it just thinks that people are that way, but it, I guess that's the way of the world. Mm-hmm. You keep your your channel very clean. Um, I I don't <laughs> think you've ever you've never cursed on a video. Do you curse in your real life by any chance? Um, not often. I try not to. Um, it's all it was. Mo- <laughs> it's mostly it's mostly when I get angry about something or if we're playing a video game or whatever. It's never it's never mean towards somebody else. Right. Um. But I guess it, it, I did no, not too often. And I, I think the worst thing I've ever said on the channel was maybe, damn it. I don't know. Oof, I said that out loud. Um, <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> That's so funny. I was going to say, I was telling Heather this last night. This is one of my questions. And I said, I think I'm just going to leave him a little time open. So if he wants to go ahead and just throw out a bunch of curse words, he can. <laughs> she, goes, <laughs> she goes, I don't know if he's going to find that funny or not. And I was like, ah, I think he'll like it. Um, so. What are some of your very favorite Funko Pops? It's hard to say that. I know that, especially when you have a large collection and you have so many "quote unquote" babies. But what are some of your favorite <laughs> Funko Pops? Um, I don't know. It's kind of the more interesting ones. Like uh, I'm a huge fan of the Atom Bomb one from Garbage Pail Kids. I like all three of those ones. Cool. Um, of course, my I, I, here's the thing. Like I, I sometimes think of monetary value as something that I really enjoy. How when it comes to it, but like. Roy from Rick and Morty. He's a very boring character, but for some reason, I, I I feel more inclined to like him just because he's worth a little bit. Do you know what I mean? So maybe <laughs> yeah. like if it weren't for value, um, there's different ones for sure. Like I guess where's that one that I got? My Buzz Lightyear. He, I don't know where he. I don't know where he went. Um, but my big uh, nine inch Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, nine inch Buzz Lightyear. Um, that one's one of my favorites only because my grandfather got it for me for my birthday. So even though that's my most expensive figure, it's also my favorite because of the backstory behind it and him picking it up for me. Um, so that's a little bit different. But people always say it's my favorite because of how expensive it is. But it's not really. Um, I would never sell that thing. But then there's another one probably too. Like uh, what's another one? Uh, Big Boy is another one I'm a huge fan of. Um, uh, Post Malone is another great one. I cool. like that one a lot. There's a bunch of different ones, but I guess those are probably the main ones. I think usually after I say these lists, I think of something better. Mr. Narwhal, Buddy the Elf. There Ooh. we go. Um, <laughs> there's a couple good ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, one of my questions was uh, if you got if you had to get rid of all your Funko Pops today, what is one that you definitely would keep? And I would assume it's the Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, for sure. Probably that one. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I I know for. for for some reason, I, I get very attached to my Funko Pops. I, I know there's a handful that I've gotten very attached to. A ha- Chris, we have a room full <laughs> that you will not get rid of. Well, no, I'm saying as far as attached to, like if today we went bankrupt and we had to get rid of everything. We're bankrupt. Can you get rid of like 500 <laughs> of these? But I'm saying if there's one that I had, like I would not get rid of. I know the one in my, I mean, do you know of one in your head, Heather, that you just could not get rid of? Like one that's just very special to you? Um... Aside from my si- probably my signed Chris Hardwick. Okay, so that's a very special one. Yeah, that's a special one. Okay, yeah, I think we all have a special one. I think that's um, that's I think that comes along with the collecting. Um, but to kind of kind of go away from Funko for a second, what is your favorite thing to collect? That's non Funko. Is or have you gotten any anything that's like non Funko that you just love and you want more of? probably like we talked about earlier pez i mean that's a more recent collectible thing but they're so cheap when i can find them um it's even cheaper than pops so you can pick up a lot of them for a pretty good price um i think i got like 30 of them for 30 dollars the other day wow Um, it was super easy to get them yeah they were at like a thrift store they had them in a bin the ladies like i've never seen somebody buy so many of them i literally wiped out the whole store wow Um, so that was fun so probably probably pez but i mean there is a lot of other things like fig pins are really great as well i'm a huge fan of those um i mean we we I guess gathered up a couple of them, not too many, but it's it's still fun. I mean, the main thing is pops, of course. Um, Super plastic is another one that I've been getting into recently. Um, I have like two, I think, of the bigger ones, and then some of the minis as well, the mystery ones. Cool. Um, so, I don't know. There are a lot of smaller collections, not so much big ones. So you go. It sounds like you go to thrift stores quite often. Um, what was like? The, I, I, I yeah. 
what was the greatest thing you found? Like I, I would say like value wise uh, at a thrift store. Have you found any, you find these people that are finding like red skull and stuff for $10. Like, have you found anything like that before? Um, I found a scar from the Lion King in box one time. I also found, um, what was another one? It was uh, Nick Fury. A lot of them are out of box, of course, when you go. Sure. Um, so Nick Fury was another one that I found, the original one. There was also, um, I found, oh, Elvis Stitch in box the other day. I just got that one. I think it was $20, I think I paid for it. Wow. Um, so it was, it's still a little bit more than normal at like a thrift store, but it wasn't too crazy. Um, I don't know. I found some like wacky wobblers before. I found uh, Puss in Boots. Oh, was cool. a good one from Shrek. I don't know. There's been a couple every once in a while. Probably the most expensive being like, 110 but it's not even worth that much because it's out of box but if it was in box we probably about 100 bucks okay um so yeah. going we were talking about non-funko before is so you, you talked about the was super plastic right is there a line of collectibles mm-hmm. you'd eventually like to collect that you just haven't gotten into yet something you haven't even purchased hmm i like that question uh probably i would probably say bear bricks bear bricks are pretty cool i'm a big fan of those um but those ones do get pretty pricey when it comes to it oh well oh i can't see the problem is i have one of those because i got the funko <laughs> one that one time so i mean technically i do have one but i guess if i were to buy more of them i haven't bought them in years uh so i guess if i were to buy more of those ones i'd probably want some bear bricks especially the thousand percent ones where they're like i think two feet tall maybe wow, i think it's wow. something like that they go for a pretty penny sometimes uh, they have like a Homer Simpson one that I've really been looking at as well as SpongeBob and stuff like that. And they come with the bigger ones with the smaller ones and you can get them in all three sizes. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, that is so yeah, probably, cool. Probably bear bricks. Yeah. Interesting. That's something I, I don't know if I probably have seen them, but I don't think I've ever heard of them. Um, I have to look those up. Heather, do you have any more questions from our yeah. audience? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Levi asked, and I don't know what this is. So I'm putting myself in a weird situation. Um, what happened to Top Don's? Oh, Tom Don. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. So, this was an April Fool's joke we did four years ago, maybe three years ago, um, where I said the channel was going away, we weren't doing pops anymore. I think I even switched out the background. I might have, I don't know if I did, to all McDonald's toys. And I pulled a <laughs> bit of McDonald's toys that we had in the basement. Um, and I was like, oh, look, we can review these. And I'm just, I, I had no plans. I just started pulling them out of the bin. I'm like, look, King Julian from Madagascar. And I just turn it on and it plays the song. I'm like, maybe we'll be reviewing this next week. And I pulled up some other ones. I'm like, oh, this one will be coming soon. Uh, and I was like, yeah, we'll go to McDonald's. We'll go pick up some new ones. Um, so, yeah, we like to do a fun April Fool's joke every year. And that was yeah, a long time ago. People still talk about that one. We might have to bring that one back this year. Um, maybe I will. I don't know. That's Top awesome. Down. I need to go back and watch that because I missed it. And that is <laughs> hilarious. Was, I think the video was called A Fresh Start. I think it was that one. A fresh Start. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about Funko Soda? Oh, love them. Got it. That's probably, I would say, their best collectible since Pops. Um, I mean, yeah. of course, they've done some really great stuff with Mystery Minis and things. I think Mystery Minis were after Pops. So that one was a really great one as well. Um, but that one's one that's really stuck with me. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I own every single one, minus the Chases, of course. Wow. Um, wow. I've been trying to get one of each. And it's just so fun because they're, they're also like, it's a pop, it's about a pop size collectible, mm-hmm. but also the fact that there's like the Mystery Mini aspect to it where you don't know what you're going to get. It's like a better version of a pop chase because you have to open it up and look inside to see what it is. So you really don't even need the box or the can um to you know like if you were to resell it, people like are okay with them coming out of the box sure um yeah but those have been really great i like the style on them too i think they're kind of funny and they're also like smaller so they're easier to display places it's just hard to display like the can with the figure as well i'm still trying to work on that yeah but uh, other than that they're pretty nice i like them i i do like them i like their size they're a lot they're they're obviously a little bit smaller they take up uh, less shelf space Funko Pops, mm-hmm. do, do you do you keep uh, m- most of your Funko Pops in their box, or do you out of box a lot of your stuff? Um, I've taken everyone out of the box. Um, I, I keep them mostly in box though, just because it's easier for space. Because then I got to keep the box somewhere as well as the figure. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm I'm not afraid to take them out of the box. I think, I, like I said, every single one I think because I usually do the 360s for my videos with the rotating base. Yeah. Uh, where I show them off all the way around, so I, I have to take them out for that. Um, so yeah, I think, I think every single one's been out. Maybe, maybe like one or two that like 10 inches that I didn't, I couldn't do it on the base cause they're too big. Um, uh, but yeah, I would say 99 of them have 99% have come out of the box. 
the 360 spinner thing were you mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you know the answer to this but i'm going to ask it anyway this isn't even part of my questions i have is are you the person to pioneer that like to come up with that for your videos because it might have been nerd therapy. I kind of remember them doing something like that, where they used to have a big, they had a big one. It was like a big black circle they put on the bottom, but it was so big that it made it look like the whole floor was just spinning. And it looked like it was kind of like floating in midair. I feel like it was them or maybe it was someone else. I feel like, I, I, I know I'd seen it somewhere before. It might not have been a Funko channel, okay. but it could have been like a collectible channel in general. But I, I know um, there wasn't many people doing it when I did it, but I did like that instead of me trying to like show it off with my hands and like show it around. It was a lot nicer to just kind of, do the 360 really quickly. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, pr- I probably wasn't the first one, though. Yeah, because your channel was the first time I'd ever seen that. And we did it for a little while. Um, we don't we don't really use it anymore, but it really comes in handy when you're showing some of this stuff off. Show the entire sure. figure all the way around. How many Fungo Pops do you have in your collection now? Uh, actually, this is funny. We're really close to 2,000 figures. I think we're at, like... 1970 something and i wanted to get like a cool one for 2000 i think that'd be a fun video so i don't know that's why i've been uh, keeping tabs on that one but yeah we're at like 1975 maybe something wow. like that so is that going to be one of your thousand dollar grails as 2000 ah uh, i don't want to promise anything just because i don't know <laughs> but yeah maybe you never know you never know maybe you'll find one at a thrift store for three dollars Hey, that would be that would be great, honestly. Yeah, that would be super cool. <laughs> I think my best um, thrift store find was an out of box Daphne from Scooby Doo. She's right around like, I think forty. That's a good one. Eh, yeah. She's okay. Well, it's a good pop though. I yeah. like the pop. Yeah, she's, yeah, a good pop. she's cute. I I I'm a Velma fan though, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you have another question that's in the the chat here. Yes. Oh, there's there's another one. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we'll fire oh off on this one because we already okay. have that one written down. Obi-Wan Kenobi asks, what's your favorite Star Wars Funko? Ooh. ooh. I don't know if I have any here. Hmm. I like to look around and stuff. Usually when I'm at the office, I look around. Um, probably, I like General Grievous. That's a great one. Yes. Um, I think that's that's I like the pop. It's, they've only ever done it once, which is really cool too, as well. And it's a Walgreens exclusive. I remember I traded. Uh, I don't know if you know him, but Ryan the Pop Guy. Yeah. I traded him uh, a couple Rick and Morty figures, and at the time, I think we traded. It was like sixty dollars for like sixty dollars worth of his figures, um, and his went up because I actually traded him like a Roy uh, back then, and then he traded me General Grievous. So it was a nice kind of like even trade, even though I mean both of them have gone up in value. I think Roy's worth more now. Um, but I don't mind because now I have General Grievous. But yeah, that's a pretty great one. I like the forearms especially. I think he's got the forearms in the figure, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. He's know. awesome. I think so, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I would say that's one of my favorite figures. I remember when that released. And <clears throat> I actually went to Star Wars Celebration. And I was in line. And I was going to get him signed by the actor who does the voice. And I decided against it because the lines were horrendous there at Star Wars Celebration. So there was a guy in line with me, a really nice guy. Um, he's, I'm still friends with him. He was from Tennessee. Ne- you know, had never met him, just kind of hanging out in line. And I handed him a General Grievous because I just thought he would dig it. And uh, that's and now, looking back on it, at the time, it was like, I don't know, $15, however much it was in the Walgreens. Now it's like, what, 150 I mean, that thing is really up there now. Probably, yeah. It's it's incredible. Uh, a lot of the Star Wars stuff is really making a big turnaround. Have you ever uh, purchased a, a Funko Pop and you thought, wow, I spent way too much money on it and it just dropped like considerably and you're like, oh my God, what happened? Yeah, there was one and everybody knows this one too. I've actually gotten a couple memes about this one too because uh, it was about, um, I don't know if you guys remember this one. I think we talked about it on that uh, Cosmic Collects one too. I might have mentioned it. I don't know if we did. Um, on the podcast we did with him, but it oh, was yeah. the uh, Jolly Bee. Oh, I got yeah. Jolly Bee, and I paid like oof, uh, one ten for it. I think it was, and now it's worth thirty dollars. Oh. Um, because at the time you couldn't find it in the U.S. or Canada. I think it was just in the Philippines. I think it was. I think it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that one's gone down a lot. Yeah, uh. <laughs> that one dropped big time. Um, what is your all time aside from Funko Pop? What is your all time favorite Funko line separate? from Funko Pops? Ooh. Um, I mean, we talked about this one earlier, but probably sodas or... 
I am a big fan of the old Wacky Wobblers as well. I know that was before I started collecting, so that one's really fun to go back and like find some old stuff on like eBay or Gemini Collectibles has a lot of them on there as well. Um, so it's fun to like look back at those ones and just like kind of pick up some older stuff that you don't see anymore in stores, but you can find for like a pretty decent price online. Something sure. Like that. Yeah, I, I like Wacky Wobblers myself. I come across them at like these small toy shows, and I'll buy them for like fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. I've gotten a bunch of Marvel ones. I actually like them. I, th- I think they're cool. And I think I mentioned this also on that podcast, but Wacky Wobbler is basically, or a Funko Soda rather, is a Wacky Wobbler just in a smaller form without a bobblehead on it. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. That's what it seems like mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, um, they, you you do have a point. Their heads are about a little bit smaller, I'd say. Yeah, on the Like on the in soda. comparison to size difference, but... So what kind of questions do we have here, Heather? Why don't you go ahead and fire off a couple of these guys here? Well, this one's really interesting because me and Top Pops, before uh, we went live, we were actually talking about this. So this is a cool question. Um, Brian asks, have you read the Harry Potter books or watched the movies? Okay, so I've seen the movies. I've never read the books. I feel like, I mean, it's fair. I, people are going to get away from the this one uh, but i feel like they're similar enough don't i don't want to say it they're, they're similar enough um that i feel like i could just watch the movies people nope. are gonna get mad at me for that wrong <laughs> uh, no, no but 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 i do have to say if you're not a reader don't worry about it i i, I will say i struggle to read picture uh, no not picture books other way around anyway it doesn't matter ignore me <laughs> um uh, but yeah Especially with that many books. I feel like I could read one book if there was one, but with there being like how many? Eight or nine seven. books? It's kind of a seven. Okay, good. Okay, well, I, I overestimated. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of them though. Uh, yes. But yeah, no, I have seen all the movies. Uh, big fan of them. I, again, like I haven't seen them for a while, so I do mess some small things up, especially when making videos on them. But yeah, no, they're, they're good movies. I like them. Cool. So what, we talked about some of your favorite Funko lines. What is your least favorite Funko line? Hmm. Is there one that just you, it just didn't sit well with you? It wasn't your cup of tea? Well, maybe – can I pick like a like a series maybe? Because there's stuff in lines like television and movies and stuff like that. Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, cool. So probably uh, Family Guy only because it didn't translate well into figures. You are so um, right. I'm a huge fan of the actual uh, cartoon and animation and stuff like that. But then when it came to it, they are 2D characters. Um, so they just didn't look – like perfect. I have Stewie and I have I think of Stewie and Peter. I don't know if I have Brian, but um, those two they look all right, but they just look a little awkward, especially with the black eyes too. I feel like their eyes really do add a lot to the character. Yeah. Um, and especially with them having the weird eyes and then also looking a little bit different, like from going two D to three D, it really just didn't translate well. And I feel like that's why they didn't continue the line. Um, yeah, they're not very. I don't good know. At all. Probably that. One. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about Funko making a Funko Pop of you but has funko ever reached out and you don't have to answer this um but has funko ever reached out to work with you like to do something with you not just the funko pop stuff but just in in general um yeah we've done stuff together i I don't know if you guys saw it the other day they had sent over the uh new funko games uh they sent over the godzilla game so we checked that one out uh that was fun i was actually pretty it was pretty fun game there's only like four or five steps to it so it's not even that hard to play um we also did i think a little while back we did part of the uh frozen fan fest i was in that i I, they sent over a couple of the uh five star figures and i got to check those out cool um so that was neat they just make small videos on them here and there i've never been paid to do a video with them but it's always fun like they just send over some new product and then we just check them out on the channel it's funny, um, this is just a thought that I had the other day. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you know, Funko had to go through a whole layoff thing. We, we all, I think we already all know that. <clears throat> Especially it hit um, their social media people. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be interesting if they reached out to a couple of these YouTubers, you especially, a couple of YouTubers that are huge into Funko that almost could be their social media people you know uh, that's kind of from a distance but I, I mean i don't know if that could work for them or not but that just seems like it makes it's, i don't know it's a new brainer to me like they're they used to post videos the social media people and it was you know um them at i guess funko hq but why couldn't say tristan make one at his own house and then you know send it to funko and then they post it up I, just a wild thought that i had the other day um that would be i think that would be actually be kind of cool considering that you've been supporting them for you know so long um, right. So what are your thoughts? I, I have to ask this question um, because you are all, all, all Funko, you know, you, you're a lover of all Funko. What do you think about Dorbs? 
Um, I mean, the thing is, I didn't really collect too many of them um, because that probably would have been like the second line that I would have started collecting because back then it was really just funk uh, pops for me. Um, and then Dorbs would have been like the second thing I would have collected. Actually, I just reorganized mine. I don't have very many of them. They all fit in this one section of the shelf right here. Um, <laughs> Zeal, yeah. I have maybe 15, 16. I used to like the Dorbs rides. I think that was a great size for a ride. Uh, and they also made some weird ones too that they didn't really make in pop form. Uh, like the Pirates of the Caribbean one, as well as the It's a Small World and the Mystery Machine. They never made a pop ride as well. Um, so that kind of stuff was fun. I like those. But the the Dorbs, I felt like, were were too similar every single time. Do you know what I mean? It was always, I, I mean, this is the same with Pops. Yeah. Um, but I feel like if Dorbs continued to, if they continued to make more, they would add more detail to them and stuff like that. Um, but they were in like the early stages, and I guess not as many people liked them. I enjoyed them, um, but I guess I just never got too into them because I was more into Pops than the Dorbs. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. I, I really happen to like the Tuscan Raider on the Bantha um, rides. The, the That's a good ride. one. Yeah, I really, really like that one a lot. Um, Heather, you have a question here? Yeah, I don't think I want to ask that. <laughs> I will. So Robert asks, most Funko YouTubers have beards. Here's mine. Will you grow one? When will, uh, you, grow when will you grow one? <laughs> Um, I don't know if I can grow one. I don't know. That's one of those things. It's like I, I, not that I've tried, but there has been a couple days where I, I, I haven't shaved and it just doesn't look good. Um, so we'll probably we'll probably skip on that for now. Um, but yeah, maybe in the future. I don't know. I feel like I'd look weird with one. I don't know. I don't hmm. know. You're doing. I your guess own I could thing. try eventually. You're you're doing your own thing without the beard. He, he's this guy's right. Everybody has a beard. Top Pops doesn't need a beard. He's Wanna, successful without the beard. Just grow like ZZ. You should grow like a ZZ Top beard if you're going to do it. Just go totally outlandish and he crazy. He does not Huge. know who ZZ Top is. Do you, Tristan? I do. You do? Oh, okay. Why would you say you something want, like that? Because that's like no, your generation. I only know him for one reason, though. I only know him because of one thing. Okay. Well, it was, I feel, like I, I feel like I've heard their music before, but it was because of the Duck Dynasty intro. They ooh, used, I yep. think they used a ZZ Top song. Yeah. <laughs> So funny. Well, believe it or not, if you like Back to the Future Three uh, in the West, you know the old Wild West part, um, there they actually played as the band in Back to the Future Three. Believe it or not. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Fun fact. Um, so, have you ever been to a Funko Day Out? No, I have not. Um, there is one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in Canada. Um, I don't know. I just I. I don't. I don't know how to get the tickets. I don't know uh, where, what to do. You know what I mean? I, it's like one of those things. that's like I would love to go, but and there's even one kind of close. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I just don't know how to get tickets or where I would have to go for that. Well, if you're interested in coming to Maryland, I might have you a ticket. So just let us know. <laughs> I'm not yeah. joking with you. I'm being serious. Um, so we, he Jason, oh, Jason Swoboda is a good friend of ours. He's the one that runs our fun, um, uh, funk, uh, or fun, fun, Funko Day Out here in Maryland. And we're actually going to have one in October, hopefully, um, if the pandemic sure. doesn't take it over. But just a heads up to you, we could probably work something out if you <laughs> wanted to come to it. It would be great. Sure. It would be great to meet you too. Um, so, <clears throat> have you ever been to a fun days? No. Okay. Never. I mean, I've never been to San Diego Comic Con. I was supposed to go this year. I had press passes for it. Wow. Um, this year, but I feel like it's not happening. So yeah. I don't think that's going to be. No, I don't think it's happening. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, like they'll probably do some virtual thing. I wonder if they're still going to have figures for it. If they were going to have one, maybe do like an online thing where you have to watch the guys. But I don't know how they would do that. Um, yeah. But I feel like they would have had the figures ready to go by now. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, that that's six months in advance. Yeah, I don't know what how that's all going to play. All of this SDCC. I mean, I know the virtual con thing is happening, and we're going to find out more information this week. But as far as the fun days thing goes, and how that's going to play out, I really like the fun days boxes that they put together that people can mm. buy online. I like those. Um, do you buy those every year? Yeah, I've gotten both. Uh, there's been two of them so far, right? Yeah. The freaky tiki one, as well as the eighties ish one. Yeah, I've got both of them. Those yeah. were a lot of fun. So I'm hoping that they continue on with that trend, even though uh, SDCC is not happening. I really hope that they still have a plan in place and they're going to do it this year. That would be kind of mm -hmm. cool. I really like that they're doing this online, you know, virtual con stuff. We posted a video about it today. The reason why I like it so much is because normalcy is kind of out the window lately. And that is the only, only normalcy that we have, that these Funko Pops are being released for these cons. And I love still tracking down stuff, even if it's online, because it 
reminds me of what we were doing last year and ha- not having all that just really stinks. Like I'm, I, I'm real, I'm so tired of all, uh, you know, how w- the world is right now. Uh, I think just like everybody else, but I'm really excited to see what they're going to drop this week. Is, is there anything that you're looking for in particular you would love to see come out of SDCC? Or I did con? see there was a couple things. There was possibly, like I saw the leaks sheet, of course. Um, and I don't know if what's going to be true or until Funko announces it or whatever. Uh, but I did see that there was a possible new Fortnite one coming out, which I do have the whole set. I'm missing one. No, I'm missing one. I'm missing Ragnarok, the glow in the dark one. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get the whole set for those ones. Also the ad icons as well. Um, I think there was a Rocks one in there, Steve Aoki, possibly. So that would be cool. Yeah. Um, I'd like to get that one. There was a bunch of different ones. It's hard to remember them all because there were so many of them. Uh, but I'm excited to see what they do come out with. But probably if there's an ad icon, I'll pick it up. When you record your videos, have there – does it ha- – I guess the best question, because I'm sure it's happened before. Have you recorded videos that you haven't posted before? That's part, part one of the question. And part two of the question is, how often does that happen? Does that happen very often? Okay. Um, not very often. There's been a couple that we've tried to do where it's like they're kind of based around skits. And I'm kind of like, eh, it's just, it doesn't translate well. Um, like some skits that have made it through are like the the Pickle Rick one. Um, that we did for our full Rick and Morty collection. That one was fun. That one was it was pretty decent. Uh, my acting was pretty bad, but it worked. Uh, but one video we tried to do was uh, a hoarders one, and I wanted to make it look <laughs> oh, like no. they were coming into my house, but it was full of figures, and it, it was it was it was really bad. And it almost made me look weird too, like, weirder than I am, I guess you could say. So I kind of get we scrapped that one. Yeah. So when time awesome. when times are normal, and you know, I guess the world is going you know normal nor- normalcy is in our life i guess what is your favorite funko mm-hmm. uh, pl- uh i'm sorry what is your favorite shop to go to to pop hunt like you we of course here in the states you know we have our game stops and all that jazz what is your favorite there uh well actually you mentioned it, it was GameStop probably because that was the best i i knew all the people that worked in there they were super nice i used to go every friday um and then i'd always pre-order some stuff they they would even text me when the new stuff's in actually it was really nice shout out to josh um and renee uh they were super nice about everything there it was always great and then even like let me know like you didn't pre-order this one but did did you want this one it was just super nice um you know they would of course always let the people there at the store first take it but if it was still there on the friday you know they'd save it for me so it was great um but yeah it's one of those things where it was almost like a like a nice fun atmosphere that i could go to every friday for figures um, and it's kind of just gone now. And a lot of my pre-orders are building up there now and I can't go get them because of the border being closed. So yeah, that's one of those things I got to get on as soon as that opens up again. Oh yeah. Um, yeah probably, probably GameStop. Yeah. So it was, it was on a regular basis that you were crossing the border to come into the States. Yeah, we live close enough. So it was kind of like every Friday we'd go over like, you know, just normal, like visit, go shopping, you know, get dinner or whatever. Um, so that was kind of what we did. And then, so GameStop was on the, you know, the route of what we would do every Friday awesome. um, for a fun video. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense then. Is it a hassle to cross the border? Um, not really. I mean, because of course you're just supposed to have under a certain amount of you know items and stuff. You're supposed to declare uh, a certain amount. So that's pretty much it. So yeah, I don't buy too many things. Like like you can't buy like thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Um, but if you buy like a hundred bucks here and there, it's not bad. That's cool. I've never like yeah. been to Canada or crossed any sort of border. So that's really cool. Yeah. So here's a hard hitting question. By the way, I just want to mention that we have three random questions that Heather has come up with. These are going to be questions that are completely unrelated. This is something fun that we always do to kind of mix things up. We're going to go into that soon. Um, But what has been your most embarrassing moment when it comes to your channel? Has there been one that just you kindly or you kind of just always remember something that was. Oh, (laughs) yeah there's one there's one big one um it was it was a video that i made and i thought it was completely fine but it was so uh my brother and his friend i don't know why i shouldn't mention this one because you guys are gonna i I privated the video so it's not up anymore um but my brother (laughs) and his friend were uh they were over at at our house like my house i mean Noah, of course lives here but like his friend came over and uh, they were just hanging out in my room and i had my tinkerbell up at the top of the shelf, the one that was from the Disney treasures with the spiral on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So it was kind of looked like she was flying. Uh, Well, they were kind of messing around. He bumps the shelf. It falls off. The thing breaks. Um, And I, I I got kind of angry. Um, and now I have to actually Tinkerbell without the thing. It never worked. It never fit back together. And I went into his room because I was so angry. And I, I, I hit his Lego and I hurt my hand instead of smashing it. <laughs> Nothing broke. 
<laughs> um, so the next day I made a story time on this and I was like, oh, let me tell you this story. And everybody was writing the comments, dude, this is, this is kind of mean. Why'd you do that? It was by accident. And so everybody was just, well, yeah, crapping on me and everything. And I was like, eh, I think I'll, I think I'll take this one down. So yeah, that's probably my most embarrassing. And it, it was weird because the video was doing better than normal too. So way more people were seeing it. I was like, yeah, oh, let's just take this down. You could have made money off of your anger. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd prefer not to. It's Okay. <laughs> That is that is something that I would have um, done if my sister messed with any of my things. Even if it were on accident. I would have destroyed, well, she never played with Legos, but something that she had, I'm sure. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that just shows you how violent Heather is. Um, <clears throat> so, have you, have you posted a video before that you thought that was going to be really super popular, people were going to like, and it just is a complete thud? Does that hap- happen to you? Yeah, it happens every once in a while. There's there's some videos that like I take a long time on, and then usually the ones that I take extra time on do well. Um, but there have been a couple. I'm trying to think of one. There's been a, there's been a couple good ones like that. Um, I don't know. I, it's hard to think of some, but there was one that I thought was going to do really well when it was um, Fortnite had just come out. A lot of the Fortnite ones do well, um, especially when the figures were officially announced. But we tried doing one where I made my own concept arts for Fortnite ones, and I was talking about how these could possibly be coming soon. Um, and nobody really cared for it. I took a long time on that. Like I photoshopped all these cool things and I got like maybe, maybe like a quarter of what I normally get. I don't know. It was just kind of like one of those things. And I thought because everybody loved Fortnite at the time, that was like one of the best, like everybody was playing it. Right. And I was like, okay, cool. We'll make this video. It'll do great. I was like in my head, I'm sitting there on the couch. I remember, I think I said this to my dad. I'm like, dad, this could be my first million view video. And it got like 5,000, maybe. (laughs) I don't remember what it was. (laughs) It wasn't great. Hit and a miss. Yeah. Um, so Heather has a question here from the comment section. Heather, do you want to go ahead and ask that question? And then I have one more and we're going to go into the three random. Yeah. So this, uh, coincides with the video we just put up. We, um, are, we were talking about how Funko is going to be releasing their SCCC, uh, pops this week or photos of them. Um, and they had that cover art. Did you see that with the three silhouettes? I did. Yeah. What are your guesses? Um, now the problem is though I had seen a lot of people talk, talking about what they think it could be, uh-huh. and then also with, I, I guess with the leak list as well, like they kind of fit together um, with what they were saying. So there was the one on the left, which you guys said in the video, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, with the surfboard. I thought that one was pretty cool. That's a probably it's, it seems like what it could be, especially with you guys saying they've done surfing ones in the past. Um, yeah. And then another one was uh, Yzma, I think was the middle one with the cat holding like a vial of something. I forget what it was from Emperor's New Groove. Uh, but it looks very similar to that. And I did see someone post that. I, I know my, my kind of guesses are what people have said, um, but they do make a lot of sense when I see them because it's kind of like, oh yeah, I can see the hand here and then whatever this, that. Um, and then the last one was the Fortnite one. I think it was Ridley, Ridley, Ripley, the one that looks like water. I don't know what it is, but it's okay. kind of the flowing water one. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, those are great. That's completely <laughs> opposite of what we thought. We thought um, <laughs> Yondu. <laughs> right. We were saying so so many wacky things on there. Um, so my last question before we get into our, our three random questions. Now, um, I had asked you what your most embarrassing moment was. This is another question. These two actually come from our good pal Thomas Studholm. Uh, he's a great. He's a really great guy. Um, his second question was, what mistake have you learned from the most? Hmm. Maybe saying to, to not say no. I think that's a big one. Sure. Um, whenever it comes to YouTube and opportunities, I should always say yes. Uh, I know in the past I've said like, no, nah, it's okay or something like that. But if the person's willing to do something for you, uh, you should totally say yes every single time. Doesn't matter what. I mean, the, I mean, it depends on what it is. But if it's something big or someone's willing to do something for you, even if it's small, um, you should say yes. I I think uh, there's been a couple times where it's happened. And it's just like, no, I probably should have said yes. And then after we're gone, or if someone's like, do you need help with anything? Or, you know, is that all you need? And I'm like, no, it's fine. Right. But then as soon as you leave, I'm like, I should have said this. You know what I mean? So to say yes, I think it's probably the one thing that you should do all the time. Okay. That's interesting. So Heather, we're going to say yes to everything from now on. Okay. Just Um, (laughs) What about the people that ask to see my feet? (laughs) <laughs> that's actually happened uh we're, we're gonna say no to those heather um that's the one question we'll say no to heather okay. what are the three ra- thank you for making it weird by the way what are the three <laughs> random questions heather go ahead i didn't make it weird they made it weird by okay asking. you're right um 
Tristan, what achievement are you most proud of? Hmm. Oh, I guess we'll go with this one. Um, last year, I got my black belt in karate, so I guess I could say that one. Awesome! That is so cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's a that's a really good achievement. That really is. That takes like forever to do. Absolutely. That was I think eight years, nine years. I think it worked. Wow. That's fun. That's awesome. Um. My greatest achievement probably would be my son. I mean, would def I, th I would say definitely would be my son um, because me being like having a kid and everything that that's in like my wildest dreams. Right. So I never I never thought that would actually happen to me. I never really thought about having a kid when I was a lot younger. And then, boom, it happens. And it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. So that's my greatest achievement. Yeah, and he's pretty cool. So that he's also... really cool, Heather. He's really. If he heard that you said he's pretty cool, he'd be very upset about that. He would absolutely know my sense of humor, and he would say, "Oh, Heather knows I'm really cool." That's right. Um, I think my greatest achievement um, was because I'm currently not at the moment, but was opening a business and running it pretty successfully. That is a really. That was an awesome achievement. Yeah. And cool. COVID literally just cut that completely in half and ripped your whole dream apart. Mm. It was terrible. Into smithereens. Yeah, it, it that that hasn't been so good, but it'll all come back together. I promise yeah, you. Yeah, things that. will things will be good. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, let's make it. Let's let's keep. Let's go with a. You have a better, a more positive question because that was sort of depressing. Yes. No, no, I'm not depressed about it. I'm <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. With, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I, like current circumstances, I'd right. rather be here and taking care of right. us. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> what else you got? Um, okay, so I'm going to rephrase the question. It was originally, what, if anything, makes you angry? But what, aside from people <laughs> breaking your Tinkerbell pops, uh, makes you angry? <laughs> oh. Oh, I don't know. Um, that's a tough one. Cause not too, I, I don't really get angry at many things. Um, yeah. The main thing is probably, I don't know, Like there really isn't like one thing that I can think of. Uh, maybe like small things here and there. It's more like situational things, I guess, can get you angry more so than like one thing that happens over and over again. Yeah. Um, I don't know. People people who drive bad and some other one. I don't know. It's one. <laughs> um, people that think the yield sign is a stop sign. Yeah. Uh, that's a big one. I don't know. This, <laughs> it's maybe who, especially recently, people who don't follow, you know, like social distancing and stuff like that. Yes. I don't know. Like just like a lot of things like that. Yeah. Absolutely agree with that. Heather? Oh, me? No, you You want go. me to go? Yeah. What makes me angry? I hate <laughs> when people say Valentine's Day instead of Valentine's Day. They put an N oh. instead of an N. I hate that. Okay, but what about the people that cannot correctly pronounce abominable? Okay, I don't want to talk about that. What's yours, Heather? Because <laughs> you, Abom you can't pronounce I, it. I can't pronounce it. Abominable. abominable. I did. See, I just did it. No, you abominable. put a D That's pretty good. It. Abominable. 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 <laughs> The more you say it, the weirder it gets. <laughs> um, what makes me angry? Um, I just don't like when people are mean to other people. That really upsets me. Like That's a big one. Um, before all this stuff was happening, I think it was like late last year, like wintertime 2019, we went to a Target. And an employee... What happened we needed help or somebody needed help with the self checkout and an employee couldn't quite figure out what they had to do. So they had to go and get the manager and the manager straight up like degraded them in front of mm. customers. And I, I just thought that was really nasty and I was too shocked to say anything at that point in time, but I wish I would have stood up for that person cause they didn't deserve it. Right. Yeah, that would that's that's a big bummer. Yeah, I don't like when they shouldn't be treated that way in the workplace for sure, or anywhere. Or no well, I'm saying spe specifically they're at the workplace there, right? So they shouldn't be treated that way, especially by a manager. I mean, that's really that's dickish. That's what dickish. What's your third question? Oh, that's, that's <laughs> sort of a curse word. Um, what is something you wish you could do better? Jeez, I don't know. Um, maybe, ooh, maybe something like I know this might sound weird, but like speaking in front of people, 
like large amounts of people. I mean, I'm I'm decent at it, especially when it comes to like you know small groups of people. But like when it's when it's like a large audience, uh, that's something that I kind of get nervous around. And I feel like I could be way better at that, especially with with it being kind of like my job is talking to people or just you know interacting with people. Uh, it is kind of weird that I don't like doing that, but I don't. And it's it's different behind a camera, I guess you could say, because it's really just you and the camera. There's nobody else in the room. Right. Yes. Uh, you can do whatever you want and then also edit stuff out. Um, but like maybe like, I know a lot of people are usually probably say public speaking, but like one of those things, or even just in front of, you know, 20 to 30 people, um, probably probably something like that. That's interesting. I, you know, I, I kind of feel the same way there, um, Tristan, because what, I, I'll tell you for sure what has happened since we started doing this channel and all that. I've, I've, I'm actually better in front of a larger group of people than I used to be, only because I think I'm more confident about <laughs> what I'm going to say. Um, but still speaking in front of people is definitely a scary thing for me. I would like to be better at it. But I would say that the one thing I think even above that, personally, I would like to draw, be able to draw better. Um, I like Ooh. drawing. I think drawing is fun. I used to do it a lot when I was younger. I don't do it that much anymore. Um, as they say, if you stick to it and work hard at it, you can do better. Maybe I should do that. But if I could just <laughs> ask for it to happen right now, I think that's what I would ask for. Okay, I like that. Mine and yours sort of go hand in hand. Um, I wish I were better at painting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's something I always wished that I could do, but like every time I pick up a paintbrush and a canvas or paper or whatever, it doesn't go very well. <laughs> <laughs> actually, we did, we did a painting night one night, and you did really well, actually. Because someone was showing me what to do. <laughs> Well, I know, but you did, but you did well. Like in other words, if 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 like I did horrible, right? So at least you made a bean with eyes on it. I did. I really did. I made a bean. It was a bean. It looked like a little skull bean. It was weird. But you did really well, even with the 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 lead instructing. You did a good job. Way better than I could. Let's yeah, but way. if if I have something in front, of, I I don't know. I'm just I'm really not creative when I am. On your own. Painting, drawing, right. anything. It's it's hard. And I have a problem with putting colors together. Like, I'm really weird about it. Okay. Well, you mean mixing colors? Hmm. No, I can mix colors all oh, day, oh. but I, I can't... Like, I don't know what color... What type of colors look good with other what colors. What is good? Yeah, right, okay. Like yeah. the design aspect oh, right. of it. Yeah, it's weird. Um. Well, so, Tristan, seriously, thank you so much um, for, for coming on with us. And I, No, I, thanks for having me on. I mentioned before, uh, you know, in the podcast, for those who actually, um, who pe the people who have heard it, and I'm sure a lot of people did, um, you're very humble. When it, when it comes to having a channel your size and, and all the things that you've accomplished, you're a very humble guy. Like, just sitting here and talking to you, I, it, it's, it's hard to, to imagine that you're behind this huge channel and all this following that you have now. And I just think that is your greatest attribute. You're just, you just come across as like a, an average Joe, a regular guy, um, but you, you've just done so many cool things. Um, so to take some time out of your day, um, out of your busy schedule of all the things that you're doing, making a video a day, holy crap, um, you're able to come here and hang out with us for a little bit. So I just sincerely appreciate that. And uh, we were just so glad to have you here. No, yeah. Thank you guys for having me on. It's honestly super fun. I was watching a lot more of your videos. Actually, you know, it's funny. I did want to mention this too. Since you guys have been doing daily, I've been watching every day now. And it's actually been fun <laughs> to kind of have you guys scheduled in during the day at one point. It's fun. That's it's awesome. Good. Well, our, yeah. our plan is to continue to do that and c continue working at some sort of stride. Um, people seem to be digging it. So if people are liking it, then I want to continue doing it because I get it. My passion is here. So uh, mm -hmm. it's been a lot of fun. We need to find the date where it was the start of us posting every day so we can keep a counter like Tristan does. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Because Tristan, <laughs> holy crap, dude. Every day. What since happens 2016. if you don't feel well? Uh, there's been a couple times where I've had like just, uh, there was one time I had a really bad sunburn. Actually, this was in between. I had an allergic reaction to something in the cream that I put on. Ooh. Um, the good news was I had already filmed that day. So there was that one. There was, I got my wisdom teeth out. Um, there was of that course the pandemic. That would be a great and, video. Uh, well, well, actually we filmed it and nothing happened. I was just kind of wow. quiet. So I didn't even get anything. <laughs> they even brought, they even brought, my brother even brought a pop with them so he could like give it to me and I tried to do something. I, I was just quiet. I don't know. So I didn't really say much. <laughs> well, 
we appreciate That's you funny. being on here, man. And hopefully in the future we'll we'll work together. We'll do something together again. This this was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. All right. Well, we're gonna have we're gonna sign off with you, and we're gonna talk to these guys about a giveaway that we're about to do. And um, we will we'll catch you next time, man. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. All right, Thank man. You, Take Tristan. care. Good night. See you guys.